And now, a fireside chat with Arthur Bergeron. Hi, um, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There were a whole bunch of us, 68 of us, and as a result, I get to do nothing but elder law. You may have seen me before at seminars that I do at senior centers. Often at those seminars, I get particular questions from people that require a more in-depth reply. So I decided to do these shows to try to answer questions like that. So we've got people calling in today, and I'm looking forward to the first caller. Hi, Mr. Bergeron. This is Mary. Frank and I have owned our home for over 30 years. A lot of my friends are telling us that it should be in a trust. Should we do that? Mary, that's a good question, and that does sound like a familiar voice. You said it sounds like the voice of one of my old clients, but the, 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 the answer to that is trusts. There is no reason to put stuff in a trust just for the purpose of putting it into a trust. Trusts are um, possible solutions to problems. So the question really is, what is your problem? Now, if you and Frank are in your 60s or less than that, and you're really not worried about this possibility that one of you might need nursing home care later on, you're, or if your neighbors are in that situation, they probably put their property into trust as a way of making sure that they could avoid the probate process. You often hear that. Now, in that case, if, if you are both alive and you're putting the, your property in trust for that reason, there's really no, really no especially good reason to do that. The reason for that is, if one of you were to die tomorrow, chances are your spouse would become the owner of that process or of that house without having to go through the probate process because you probably own the property jointly with rights of survivorship. If on the other hand, Frank had died and you were the only owner of the property and you wanted to make sure that your kids or whoever you wanted to get the property got it after your death, then at that point, it may make a lot of sense to create a revocable and amendable trust, name yourself as the trustee so you keep complete control over your own house. But name a successor trustee who's probably going to be one of your other kids, who's going to take control following your death as the successor trustee and do what you want with the house, whether that means convey it to one of your kids or sell it and divide up the money, whatever you want. The main thing to know about that is that, that success, if you have the property in trust and the property goes to a successor trustee, that means it doesn't have to go through probate because the purpose of probate is to figure out who owns things that you have at the moment of your death and that are in your name. If on the other hand, you and Frank are older and you're in your 70s, like a lot of my clients, my, my average client age or my median client age is 74. If you're in your 70s and one of the things you're really worried about is, oh my God, what if I end up needing to go to a nursing home or I need to have a lot of care at home so that I can get into an, so that so that I can keep from going to a nursing home. Well, in that case, you may want to um, create a trust for that purpose. Once again, though, if you and Frank are both still alive, you don't need to create that trust right now. You don't. What you need to do, and and the reason for that is if either you or Frank needed nursing home care or needed a lot of care at home and needed to qualify it for Mass Health today, what you could do is you could transfer that house to your spouse today and tomorrow you'd be able to qualify for mass health because your spouse, the healthy spouse, is entitled to have the house no matter what it's worth and you can transfer it to him at any time because contrary to what you've probably heard, there are no look back periods regarding transfers between spouses. So you can transfer assets including the house to Frank at any time and qualify for mass health the next day. However, if Frank were to die and the two of you own that property jointly with rights of survivorship so that you became the sole owner, and if at that point you needed to qualify for mass health, you'd have a problem. Because while you could qualify for mass health just by telling the folks at mass health that you intended to return home, and by the way, you, you, you say if you're in a nursing home, and by the way, you do that even if there's absolutely no chance that you could actually return home. According to the regulations, as long as you say you're going to return home, the house becomes a non-countable asset and you can qualify for mass health even though you own the house. The problem though is that once, you, once, Matt, once you've qualified for mass health, if you're in a nursing home, 
MassHealth will put a lien on that house to make sure that following your death, MassHealth gets repaid for any amount that MassHealth has paid on your behalf while you were in that nursing home. If that is your worry, then the, the, and you're single, then the only way to protect that house is to transfer it out of your name and, and no matter who you transfer it to, because Frank is, or because your spouse is dead, um, there's going to be a five-year look-back period or a five-year wait before that house becomes safe. You need to transfer it out of your name, maybe to an individual like one of your kids, or if you've got a bunch of kids and you want to make sure that things are, are handled so that upon your death, house gets sold, the proceeds get divided up, or if you've got a child that maybe has some creditor problems or, or maybe has a marital problem, then you may want to create a trust, an irrevocable trust. Name one or more of your kids as the trustees of that trust and then convey or transfer an interest in your house to the trustee of the trust. Now, typically, if you're doing that, you would transfer to that child not the entire interest in the house, but only a so-called remainder interest in the house. That is ownership of the house after you die. You probably want to keep a so-called life estate in that property. That is the right to stay in the house for the rest of your life the right to make sure that nobody can throw you out of that house, right? Together with the obligation that you now have to continue to pay the bills and stuff regarding that house. So the bottom line is if you are single, if you are single and you wanna make sure that upon your death, your property won't go through probate, then you may wanna create a revocable and amendable trust, keep total control of your property, make yourself the trustee and make one of your kids the successor. If you're single, and you wanna make sure your house is safe and that the value in it doesn't end up really being depleted if you need nursing home care or need a lot of care at home, then you wanna create an irrevocable trust, a trust over which you don't have control. Because if you have control, then for mass health purposes, the house is still yours. You wanna create an irrevocable trust. You wanna transfer to the trustee of that trust, probably a so-called remainder interest in the property Keep a life estate in the property so that you're not losing control of that house. Wait five years so you don't want to do this at the last minute. You don't want to be waiting until the, your doctor has just told you, geez, you know, Mary, you got a problem here. You know, you may have dementia. At that point, it's probably too late to be doing this transfer. So you want to be doing this transfer and then, if you, then wait five years. And at the end of that five-year period, that interest that you transferred is going to be safe in the event that you then need to qualify for mass health because you need nursing home care or because you need a lot of care at home in order to stay out of the nursing home. Mary, I hope that answered your question. Um, I'm gonna be doing this kind of show, answering specific questions regarding a whole variety of issues. If you see this show and you're interested in that um, or in having me answer your question, I'd like you to email us. Um, and the email address is shown right now on a banner on this, on this clip. Uh, or call us. You can call me. My direct line is 508-860-1470. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Mary, I hope this was helpful for you, and I look forward to hearing from you or your husband or any of your family sometime in the near future.